Yes. And I think, um, what's, what's next? I just wanted to ask about using your Bluetooth in your car, and also how safe is texting? Okay. If the Bluetooth goes through the car radio, that is the best way to use it. I always do not have the phone on your body, okay? But that's the safest way to use it. Now, for the past three years consecutively, there's been an increase in deaths from car crashes, okay? And I believe that this is the cause, to be quite frank, because you have, blue, you have people talking on their phones, you have cars that have become entertainment centers, you know, the new cars with the big screens and everything. How can anybody be paying attention to the road, really? And I know that the uh, National Transportation Safety Research Board has called for pulling back from this, and they get slapped around when they do because people are so addicted to the technology. And in fact, it does trigger dopamine in the brain. But the safe way to use a phone in a car is through the car radio, all right? And if somebody is using a phone and it's not going to the car radio, then you're magnifying the signal all over the place. So only use a phone in the car if it's an emergency. If you really have to talk, put the phone at the window so that the radiation is going back and forth out and not in you, all right? Sorry, and texting. Um, well, texting is obviously much better than talking. Um, on the phone. But, it, but really, I want to encourage people to use these devices less unless they're wired, okay? But texting is much, is much better because you want to have the device away from your body and certainly away from your brain, your reproductive organs, your bone marrow, right? Um, is somebody going to take a microphone around for questions, just if you want? Yes, ma'am, right here. Yes, uh, you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Over here. All right. Thank you. Oh, we got two big helpers today. Yes. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, and it's so informative, especially with other generations moving forward and, and really learning about this um, information. But I had a question about... Um, the devices that they're putting on the phones now, which are said to protect you, the you know Q links, know. all these little companies, or even the you know the different devices that you can. The I people who sell these devices are well-meaning. I know many of them. <clears throat> I know of no independent data that shows that these devices work, and a lot of the th images they show you are thermography images of heat. Um, we're not. It's not the heat we're so concerned about, really. It's the pinging of the invisible radiation that most people can't feel, but a small percentage can. Right. Yes, you have a question. How far away should you keep the phone from your head? Well, you should keep it like as far away as you can, all right? And as, how, may I ask how old you are? I'm 11. You're 11. Do you have a phone? Yes. I see. Well, if, if I were your parent, you would only have a phone for emergencies, and I would tell you only to use it for that. And do you, you have friends who sleep with their phone? I, I don't know. I know. You don't. Because, but, I don't. Right. But I really, and I appreciate very much the question. We're always looking for interns, by the way, you know? And we have, we're, we're, we're thinking, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you, um, your dad about, is whether we should launch a national contest to produce videos like the, one we, the ones I showed you. Because I think video, it's not that we're anti-technology, we're just pro-health. You know, we don't want to say, like, that, like the young girl said in that video, we don't want to tell you not to use it, we want you to be smart about how you do use it. And I think that uh, keeping it in your backpack, not carrying it on in your pocket is so important. It really is. Thank you for your question. Okay, so some more over here. We've got a lot of questions. Steve, you have to tell me about time because there's a great movie you can see. I don't mind if people want to get up and get the pizza while it's hot and come back and ask questions just and try to keep the noise down a bit because I know the pizza's here. Is that okay with you, Steve? Let people who want to eat go get the pizza and, the, and ask questions, and let's try to keep the conversation down while they do it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I pretty much have worn an analog hearing aid most of my life. And recently, um, I graduated to a digital hearing aid. Uh -huh. I noticed every time that I'm near an electric fuse box, I get an intense hum 
that I picked up. Yeah. And when I went to visit my children in their apartment building in Brooklyn, there is a persistent hum, but when you go near a certain set of wall with electronic wires, I told my children to move the crib away from it because I was sensing an amount of a hum that I couldn't um, take. Yeah. And that might be... It was, it was painful, What do I right? do? Right. Uh, is there a, an impact on my brain with my hearing aid? Yeah, okay. This is a tough one, okay? I also ha need hearing aids, and I'm trying to get... It, uh, we, I'd like to talk with you about this after. We need to demand that they not make us have Bluetooth digital hearing aids right now. I want to have hearing aids that go inside my brain you know, I want because I want to be active in sports and not just the one that goes over the back because you have your hearing aid inside, right? Okay, well, there's a way to get hearing aids that are not Bluetooth and digital and we need to demand them. I talked about girl cots. We need to know enough to say, I don't want to have this because you've become a monitor and you're absolutely right about your children in that crib. They're, they're, they need to figure out what, you know, it's probably on the other side of the wall somebody has a lot of stuff that, that is operating. But wherever you're picking up that hum, that's a problem for the people who are there. And of course it's a problem for you, as I understand it, because I've talked to somebody else with this, it can be painful, right? It hurts when you get that kind of noise and it's inside your head. It's for real. Uh, it's being generated by the combination of things. You should, number one, report that to the company because that's a product defect. Okay, the products are certified, and this I know, not to be interfered with by other electronic devices. So this product isn't working. You should go back and you say, I want a different hearing aid that is not Bluetooth and digital. Really? Okay, yes. A microphone, uh, oh, this young man has it, go ahead. How long should I be on devices? What? Uh, I prefer that you be on wired rather than wireless, okay, in general. And the device question is a tricky one because many schools are now requiring that you work on a Chromebook or an, how many, do you have to have a Chromebook or an iPad in your school? Of your homework on home, Chromebook and iPad? We need more and more parents to say we want, we want to have less of that. Not none of it, not zero, you understand. We want our children to be digital citizens. We want them to know how to operate in the new modern world. But frankly, what's gonna happen when Google goes down? What's gonna happen when you can't get to Wikipedia? Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? What are you gonna do? There are, there's information out there, even knowing, learning how to dig into the internet. I think that we're failing our children and not giving them the proper tools. And this, there are a number of schools, Waldorf schools, that are almost anti-technology. I am not anti-technology. I use technology, but I want us to become smarter and to be able to have our children know how to function in a library, an actual library, know how to find out information, know how to ask questions. And you know, I would welcome you working with your schools, looking at what we have done. There are schools in this country that have gone wired. There are. And it has to be done at the school level. Thank you. And our executive director, Theodora Scarada, is an expert in that. She really is. All right. Yes, ma'am. Um, please, what do you suggest for those of us who earn a living using the computer? And it's based on that. Just be, you know, you, if you can use it wired rather than wireless, do that. You can, you can use a, look, even the MacBook can be wired. There's okay. a, yes, absolutely. You, there's a thing you put into your USB and it gives you a way to, get, to connect to the ethernet. And, you very, you and, then, in. and then the router, you know what? I showed at the very end my, my slide, the, uh, see if I can show you, yep, here. This is a, see this? This kind of connection right there, that kind of connection, you can connect almost any device you have, it can be done. And now, this is a business opportunity, Steve. There are people who want to know how do you wire your home. I know that Beth, um, I think Beth Greer and I think Beth Lambert have both worked on this. And there are people now uh, who are um, 
working with bowel biology and how to do this. And it, you, how many of you would want someone to come in and show how to reduce your radiation in your home? In this, how many? Look, and you don't know who to hire, right? It's another business, right? Okay, I think we have lots of questions. Um, yes. Hi, could you um, tell me the difference, or actually if it's any better, the Bluetooth uh, pieces that go in the head or the headphones, is yep. that better than holding the phone? Yes, much, much better. Now, I personally don't recommend Bluetooth for any long period of time, and I'm not, I would prefer that people not use it. I certainly wouldn't want a young child to be using Bluetooth. A wired headset, preferably with an air tube at the end, is the best to reduce exposure. It really is. A speakerphone is even better, but you, you know, a speakerphone gets to be a little obnoxious when you're in a public when you're in a public place. Okay. Um, let's see. This woman right here. Um, thank you. So uh, one thing that we don't hear about, you know, we've talked about how to protect ourselves. Uh, but for instance, when people text, a lot of times I can be standing somewhere and they can be standing right in back of me and their cell phone is right near my spine or, my, or the back of my head, not near theirs. Yeah. Or if someone's yeah. taking yeah. a photograph, and usually they're not on airplane mode. That's and, and it hurts. It, it, and, and, so and you it's are. Hard. I mean, people it sounds, make fun of me for, for if I if I say something, but no. no one's talking about it. There are probably other people in this room who are also a slight uh, what's called hypersensitive to this radiation. There, it, you are not alone. Number one, you're not alone. And I'll give, I'll tell you, I used to think. I want to be quite frank. I used to think that this problem was all in the head. And I really got educated by a jet pilot. A woman became a commercial jet pilot 20, 20 years ago. Do you know what that means? She flew 747s across, back and forth, for 20 years. This is a woman who was like a mountain biker and a skier and a racer and like strong as an ox. And circumstances arose, she became electrosensitive and couldn't fly those planes anymore. And I've met several doctors, physicians, who also have the same, explain, complain of the same thing. I have recently published a chapter in a medical textbook about medical management in, in the digital age. So this is a real problem that you have. It's not in your head. And there are solutions to it that involve distance and in your circumstance, you have to try not to get into a place where you're going to be near people who are going to be doing that. Or you have to figure out how to say nicely, would you please not do that because I'm quite sensitive. And often people will go, you, you're nuts. That's a problem. That's why we need to develop more cards and give more information to people. Yeah, I understand. The Israeli government has a, um, is one of, the, one of the governments like France that has advice. The French are now embarked on a national educational campaign to tell people about this issue. Um, so I think that we're, we're making headway. That's all I can say. All right. Yes. Um, right, this gentleman right here. Sometimes I put my phone in my sock or the other sock just to it a little bit, but later on I feel like vibration. When the phone is not there anymore, but I right. feel a vibration in my. Is that that sensitivity? Yes. That yes. Okay. Second question: They have these little things that I heard that you put on the phone. Is it helpful? Those little tiny little dot things. I have glue? never seen any independent test data except on the Pong case, which is now called Alara, I think, that it does reduce the radiation between 60 to 90 percent when I saw it tested. And I went to, you know, that, and that was a few years ago. So I th my basic advice is distance is your friend. Have good habits. And there are some software that can help you. There's something called Talk On, T-A-W-K-O-N, which you can download, and it sort of flashes a, a red light when your signal is too high. Um, I am going to have to end the discussion in a few minutes, so I don't know how to pick, how to pick the last one. Here's like, I'd like to suggest something, Steve. Um, how about if we, because um, people have a lot of questions, how about if they give you the questions, you give them to me, and then we'll answer them and send them out on your website or something. How about we do it like that? All right? All right. So we, we, I'm sorry I won't be able to. All right. Thank you.